Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to tell you what are my top five favorite boxing shoes. So stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys, Carlo here, and today I'm gonna to give you guys my top five boxing shoes for 2021. Now, these are all shoes I personally use in the past and the present for my training, and there's a couple things I look for when it comes to a good pair of boxing shoes. Um, and the number one thing is gonna be comfort. Now, without comfort, in my opinion, um, you're not gonna to wanna to wear the shoes, and they're probably end up gonna end up being shelved somewhere in your garage collecting dust. So comfort is number one, um, especially for guys like me, I have wide feet. So it's, it's really hard to find that happy medium with having a nice, fitting boxing shoe, but not being too tight to where my feet hurt. So it's really important to get something very comfortable that has a, a breathable and flexible upper on the shoe. Um, you know, obviously boxing shoes traditionally are made snug because it's used for a lot of footwork movement. So front, back, lateral, side to side movement, uh, pivoting. And the last thing you want is the shoes to be too loose to where you end up getting kind of some kind of foot injury, like a blisters on your feet and your feet end up hurting. So uh, just making sure that you have the good combination between uh, comfort and the correct size. So comfort is the, the number one thing. The second thing you look for is going to be the quality of the shoe, the craftsmanship and the materials that they use. So um, those kind of go hand in hand. What kind of upper they use? Is it is it leather? Is it synthetic? Do they use mesh? There's a breathability that's built into it. Um, and then also with the upper, does it have a good heel cup, good support? Does the structure of the upper have some harder materials like some kind of uh, PU, thermoplastic, that helps create kind of the skeleton of the upper part of the shoe to give you structure, but also give you breathability and flexibility uh, around the top part of your foot going all the way to your ankle and higher up on the lower portion, uh, lower portion of your leg. So um, that's really important. And then obviously the remo removable insole, does it have a good insole, is it thick, is it thin, does it offer good support, can you use that insole uh, or should, you, should I say, could you use that shoe for more than just training in the boxing ring? Could you use it for any kind of interval training outside of that? I know a lot of guys outside of their boxing training will continue to wear their boxing shoes uh, when they do their their uh, their cardio or they're doing some kind of strength con and conditioning. Uh, and so do the shoes offer enough support for that? Um, and then the same thing with the outsole. Does the outsole get, give you a good, a good enough grip and is it durable enough for both the canvas inside a boxing ring, as well as maybe some work outside on the concrete. Uh, some boxing gym have like a rubberized floor, so will it work good with that? So there's a there's a different several different factors when it comes to that. Um, and then lastly, gonna be uh, the price. So obviously, you, what's in your budget? Um, you know, all of the things that we just mentioned are great, uh, but you also have to define what budget you have. So, and my recommendation for that is to kind of give yourself a ceiling as as far as what you're willing to spend when it comes to uh, boxing shoes and thankfully most boxing shoes at least the really good ones uh, are anywhere one between a hundred and two hundred dollars obviously if you go with like something imported like a pair of Mizunos and you're looking at three four hundred bucks but uh, that's pretty rare I mean most most boxing shoes are within one to two hundred dollars uh, thankfully um, so unlike boxing gloves where you have uh, this huge range of, of, of prices uh, boxing shoes are is, is typically a little bit more affordable when when it comes to that range so those are the things to think about it and let's go ahead and let, get this list started Coming at number five are going to be the super rare boxing boots. Now these come in either white or black, all white or all black, have much more of a classical old school look to them with some new school features. These retail for $109 through the super rare website. And the great thing about these shoes, they actually come in whole and half sizes. Um, sometimes you see some of your favorite boxing shoes out there only come in whole sizes and not halves. If you're like myself, I usually wear a size 10 and a half. So uh, that kind of puts you in a predicament where you have to either go with like a 10 or a 11. So uh, when it comes to boxing shoes, I usually go a half size up if they don't have half sizes. But in the case of these super rare shoes, they do have half sizes, which is great. Now, what I like about this shoe is that it uses a, uh, a blend of a synthetic and a vegan, uh, vegan leather upper, and you also have mesh. Um, and I love the look of the glove. These, these shoes do run true to size. If you have white feet, then definitely go a half size up like I did. So I went with a size 11 since I wear 10 and a half. But these shoes are very lightweight. They look great. And they're a mid-top shoe, meaning they're not too high, so it doesn't take forever to put the shoes on. They're not too low. 
to where you don't have a good, a good enough uh, amount of ankle support. So it gives you an ample amount of ankle support. I do like the lace-up system that they use on there. It's traditional. It works really well. And you have long laces to where you can wrap it around your ankle for added support. Um, the toe box area on it is on a little bit on the narrow side. So if you do have wider feet, go half size up. If you do have normal to skinny feet, then just get true to size with these shoes. Um, the bottom it has like a herringbone style um, uh, outsole, which is nice. They also has a removable insole so I could put my own personal um, custom orthotics in there if I want something thicker and give me a little bit more cushioning. Uh, but the shoes are great. You get excellent uh, feedback from the surface that you're walking on or that you're, you're working out on. Um, I use it on both boxing canvas. Um, I've used it on a concrete floor. Um, I've used it on a rubberized floor. I've used it on asphalt and it works really well. Um, and at the price of $109, they're really, really nice shoes. Um, I would say the only drawback with the shoes is going to be very minimal. Um, they definitely need other colorways other than all white and all black. Although those are really nice classical colors, I think they can they can offer more in that regard. And, and maybe widening the, the front of the shoe up just a little bit more. If they can somehow uh, kind of open up the tip of the boxing shoe a little bit more, then it'll it'll give, give much more range in terms of different types of sizes of feet that will fit in the shoe. But outside of that, it has a very supportive, has good grip on the floor, and they look great. So coming in at number five are gonna be the super rare boxing shoes. Coming in at number four are gonna be the Nike Hyper KO 2.0 boxing shoes. These retail for about $180, and you can get them in multiple colorways, like blue, red, gray. They have kind of like this dark green with yellow built into it. Um, and I know they just released like an all white with pink. Um, they do come in both whole and half sizes, which is great, especially for those of you that like to go half size up for wide feet like myself. And um, these are the successors to the original Hyper KO, which in my opinion are probably the most popular boxing shoes um, in the boxing community. I mean, if you've seen any professional fight, amateur, both pro, amateur, you'll, you'll notice that nine times out of 10, one of the boxers is probably using, or both are both probably wearing the Nike Hyper KO, or at least the original ones. Now you're starting to see more of the, the second version that we're discussing here. Um, but what makes these, these shoes really nice is the fact that they use some really good technology built into both the upper and the outsole. So the upper uses a flywire material as well as TPU, so thermal plastics. They also have a sock that's engineered into the skeleton of the shoe. So when you put the shoe on, it doesn't really have its own separate tongue. A lot of classic boxing shoes will have the upper, the lace-up system, and then you'll have this is a tongue that sits on the top of your foot um, with the laces that go through. And sometimes you'll have a little tongue, a little tongue piece that the laces go through. Uh, with the Hyper KO 2s, it's, it's all combined as one piece. So you have the sock-like fit that integrates into the skeleton of the fly, fly wire material in the shoe, uh, and it kind of creates all one piece together that meshes together. So you get a much more snug kind of custom feel with the shoe. And then also the lace-up system is really nice as well. It's kind of a quick lace system, so where you, when you pull up on it, for the most part, the laces will all kind of come up together. You don't have to go to each individual slat and put, kind of pull up on each piece of the, the lace to do it. So most, for the most part, you can just pull up on it and all the laces will kind of, kind of come together, which I love that. I love that feature. Um, I also like the heel cup on it and the outsole. Now, the, the issue I have with the outsole is, is kind of similar to a lot of the shoes that share, share, share the similar type of outsole. Uh, where it's ru rubber, it's thicker, and then right towards the outside corner of your feet, towards the front toe box, it kind of gets narrow. And that's the issue I have with the Hyper KO 2.0s as well as the original Hyper KOs and even the Macho Mize is that right here on the outside edge of my foot, if this is my feet right here, I get a lot of rubbing right here, right? And that's because it's very narrow and you can't really break that portion in because it's rubber. It kind of rolls up and the sole kind of comes up to the outer edge and there's not much breaking in you can do there. So if you have white feet, you typically have to go a half size up. And even then it's still a little bit on the narrow side and can be uncomfortable. So that's to me, the biggest drawback with the shoe. I do love the material, the rubberized outsole that has the different patterns on it to give you good grip, whether you're using it on the canvas, outside, um, inside a gym that has regular floors. So you get, definitely get a good amount of grip when you're using the shoes, both good for lateral, front and back movement. I also like the height of the shoe. It doesn't come up too high. It's not a high shoe. It's not too low. It's, it's about right there when you want it to be uh, as far as a mid-rise shoe. So as far as the height goes, you get a good amount of ankle support. The shoe feels comfortable. The only issue I have with the shoe is how narrow it is on that front toe box as well. And the price of it is a little bit on the high side. It's one of the more expensive boxing shoes out there at $180. Uh, but in this case, you kind of get what you pay for because they use more premium materials uh, with the Hyper KO 2.0. So coming in at number four are going to be 
the Nike Hypertail 2.0s. Coming in number three are going to be the Everlast Elite Boxing Shoes. These retail for $99, so you can get them in multiple colorways like red, black, and blue. Unfortunately, they only come in whole sizes and not half sizes. So uh, generally speaking, I always recommend to go a half size up. So uh, if you're at a half size like 10 and a half, nine and a half, for 10 and a half, I would go with 11. If you're at nine and a half, I would go with 10. The reason I say that is you can always, you can always add like a thicker insole to fill in that void if it's a little bit on the loose side. But if you get a half size down, like if you're nine and a half and you get size nine, then it might be too tight and then there's nothing you can do about it. Even if you try stretching the shoe out, it's, it'll probably be too snug. So always go a half size up. Now, this shoe is really nice in the fact that it uses an open mesh upper with suede and microfiber that's integrated into it. So it's, it's fairly lightweight when it comes to the upper. Um, they call it a high top shoe, but to be honest with you, it, to me it's more like a mid, which I love. To me, mids are my favorite height when it comes to the shoe. Um, it also has a Velcro system for the top where the ankle is at, so you get added support uh, uh, you know, along with the lacing system that you have on it. Uh, and then it has this outsole that's pretty proprietary to just the Everlast Elite shoe. They use uh, a sole that is actually partnered up with Michelin, the same company that makes tires, uh, to call it the Michelin Technical Sole. So this sole to me was kind of a game changer when it was first released because um, generally speaking, most, most of the time boxing shoes come with a really thin sole. So you can really feel the, the, the surface that you're walking on. With this, it's a little bit thicker and more supportive, but to me, it's more of a hybrid shoe. So to me, Everlast saw the need for a shoe that not only can you use when you're using it for boxing, you know, doing uh, sparring, hitting the mitts, hitting the bag, but if you needed to do any kind of strength and conditioning, you can do it with these shoes. If you needed to do some kind of like burpees, lunges, uh, you know, explosive uh, box, uh, box jumps, stuff like that, you can use these shoes and the sole, one, is durable enough to take that, whether you're doing it outside on the concrete, asphalt, uh, whatever kind of surface you have at your gym, or if you're doing it on the canvas, it lasts longer than a thinner sole, but it's also more cushioned so that if you do more high impact um, type exercises, uh, it's less stress on your knees, your legs, and your lower back. So I definitely like the fact that uh, Everlast integrated it into the shoe. Fit-wise, they fit really nice. Um, I would obviously always recommend going a half size up. Um, they're not narrow shoes. They, to me, they run true to size about, uh, but again, always go a little bit larger. You can always add an insole later down the road. You do have a removable insole uh, with the shoe, but the best feature by far is going to be the fact that you have that outsole that is really made for everything. The shoes are very comfortable and the price point is perfect at $99. I think it's right where it needs to be at price point wise to compete with some of the other shoes. I mean, if you're looking at it, it's almost half the price of the Hyper KO 2.0s. And to me, I think they're a better shoe. So coming in number three are going to be the Everlast Elite Boxing Shoes. Coming in number two are gonna be the Hayabusa Pro Boxing Shoes. These retail for $99 and you can get them in multiple colorways like blue, red, uh, black, and white. Unfortunately, they only come in whole sizes. So again, like other shoes I've mentioned in the video, um, I would always go with the, the, the size up from where you're wearing. So again, if you're wearing 10 and a half, go up to size 11. Now, what I really love about these shoes is to me, uh, they're kind of a perfect blend of everything. They're a mid height, they're a mid, mid height shoe. Uh, it has a synthetic upper that uses both suede and open mesh to give you that breathability and uh, that nice sock like fit. Um, your feet is really easy to put pull in and kind of you know, push in and pull out. Some of the other shoes that you have, um, sometimes you put your feet in it and you have to unlace all the laces and it's just kind of a pain. With these shoes, they're really nice, easy to put in. You do have a removable insole that you can put your own orthotics in it. And the best thing about the shoe is how comfortable they are. They feel to me like a more comfortable version of the Hyper KOs um, in the fact that you, you get a good amount of kind of that sock-like snug fit with the shoe. But that front toe box, like I continue to mention in the video, is wide enough for people even that have wide feet so you don't get that discomfort and it breaks in because the upper is a little bit more flexible than something like a TPU or even like a fly wire material that doesn't have much give. It's not like a, a fabric, like an open mesh fabric or even a suede to where you can kind of stretch it out. So I definitely love the ankle support on it. Um, the insole feels really good. Good amount of cushioning. The toe box is a perfect size. And then the rubber outsole is good as well. Um, thick enough to where you can use it, obviously, for uh, doing any kind of, of calisthenics. If you're doing any kind of strength conditioning, you could use it as well. I would limit it in that regard. It's not as good as the Everlast Elite with the Michelin sole, 
uh, in that regard. So I would still kind of limit it to any kind of high impact because you don't want to uh, burn that out so well, just primarily doing any kind of like strength and conditioning. But uh, you want to kind of save it more for your boxing workouts and being in the ring sparring with it. Uh, but it is not one of those super thin soles that you find on some of the cheaper shoes, like some of the Tidal, like the Tidal Hyperflex shoe has a really thin sole on it. And any kind of uh, exercise that you're doing outside on the concrete will burn right through that sole. So uh, to me, it's a really good balance of everything and uh, a really comfortable shoe. They look great as well. I think they look really cool. Uh, and to me, the closest thing, if I were to compare it in the looks department, um, and obviously the fit, like the Hyper KOs, is kind of like the Rival Guerrero RFX shoes that uh, I, I used to wear as well. But to me, a little bit more cushion, cushion a little bit more comfortable. So coming in number two are going to be the Hayabusa Pro Fight boxing shoes. Now coming in at number one are going to be my favorite boxing shoes, which are the Adams ABV series boxing shoes. Now these shoes are a little bit more of a boutique brand. Obviously they don't have the big name like Nike, Adidas, Hayabusa and all the other brands out there. But um, if you've been around boxing long enough, you'll know that Adam's Boxing actually has quite a few of his shoes on some, a lot of the, the prolific pro boxers that we see out there that, that support his product. And the ABV series shoes, I, I actually had the ABV ones. Originally the ABV ones were um, a shoe that replicated the Reebok uh, Renegade boxing boots. Back in the day, I don't know if you guys remember this, but everybody wanted the shoes that Mayweather was wearing, which were the Reebok Renegade shoes. But at that time, uh, Reebok had not released it to the general public. Um, there was only a couple boxes that I knew that, that would wear those shoes. I know Mayweather wore it. I, I know Amir Khan had a couple of pair of those Reebok boxing boots. So they were wildly popular, but nobody could get their hands on a pair of them. So Reebok eventually re released the Renegade boxing boots, which are, are solid shoes, not my favorite. But then Adams Boxing was able to release their ABV series, which was a, kind of like a, uh, a version of those Renegade shoes that looked very similar, were made in Mexico and still are, um, but were really comfortable. And the reason they're my favorite shoes is we're on, I believe the fifth generation of the shoe is that they're perfect for wide feet. They're perfect for regular feet. Um, you can get them in custom sizes, custom colors. They're very lightweight. They use a synthetic mesh upper with suede inserts as well. You, you can remove the, the insole to put your own orthotics in it. The toe box is a perfect width, so you can get true to size and not have any issues with discomfort. Um, the shoe is more on like a mid to a high top shoe. So putting it on is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes because you gotta really dip your foot into the shoe to get it on, uh, but it's well worth it. You do have, um, with the newest version, you have actually two straps, one on the forefoot, and you also have one around the ankle. Uh, the versions I've been using, the ABV4 and before that, um, actually just have the ankle strap. So you have both the ankle strap and the laces to give yourself that ankle support as well as the top portion of your foot, the perfect support for that. And then you also have the rubber outsole that has that herringbone pattern, uh, which has kind of evolved over time as well from the earlier models of the ABV series shoes, uh, where it was regular, uh, kind of a regular flat rubber sole. And the newer ones has, actually have like a herringbone sole. So great for doing it for sparring, great for using it for any kind of in-ring in work, hitting the heavy bag, hitting the mist, whatever you want to do with boxing, you can wear them. Uh, and the sole is thick enough now to where I'm, I'm actually using them to do just my general uh, general exercise. I've, I've actually used those uh, shoes a couple times in a regular gym and people have complimented me on those shoes because of how, how cool they look. So um, these are just the shoes I, I kind of continually go back to. Um, even though I have all the other shoes that are part of my rotation. To me, the Adams ABV shoes have been always a consistent, comfortable shoe. Um, I haven't had any issues with the durability outside of your normal wear and tear that you would expect from a pair of shoes. Uh, but they work great, they feel great, they're great for boxing, they look good. Uh, and cost-wise, they're only $119. Um, if you get customs, if, obviously the price will go up from there but they're relatively affordable and they're kind of within that same price range as a lot of the other boxing shoes, but they're definitely my favorite shoes. So coming in at number one are going to be the Adams Boxing ABV Series boxing shoes. Well, thanks for watching guys. That's my list for 2021 of my top five boxing shoes. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you guys have any questions or comments as usual, put them down below in the comments box and I'll see you guys later. Peace.